While Miss Virginia Dell was away on her summer vacation, her house got robbed. Three people were caught on the security camera and they became the main suspects. Ayla, Virginia's best friend, said, Uh, I've been coming to pick up mail. Sophia, the housemaid, said, I've come every Wednesday to clean the house. And Danica, the gardener, said, I come every Friday to take care of the garden. Who robbed Miss Dell? It must have been Sophia, the housemaid. She said that she cleaned the house every week. But look at the house. It's very dusty. She's shady, and she must be the main suspect. Last Friday, Mary sneaked out to a party without asking her mom's permission. Her mom found out about it and grounded Mary for a month. No friends, no parties. Two weeks after that, there was another party, and Mary couldn't miss it. The morning after the second party, Miss Roberts walked into Mary's room and asked her what she'd been doing in the evening. I was solving my new puzzle, the girl answered. Mary got grounded for another month. Why? Take a look at the puzzle. She's barely started it. It doesn't look like an evening-long activity. Jane was a straight-A college student, but her friends hadn't heard from her in a week. When she didn't show up for an exam, her best friend got concerned. She came hmm. to visit, but Jane wasn't home. So, she reported that Jane had been kidnapped. There were three suspects, all of them Jane's ex-boyfriends. Michael, Miguel, and Daniel. All of them denied being in any contact with the girl. Who should be arrested? The note on the fridge is a clue. It looks like a recipe, but it's not. It's the number of letters you should take from each word. Two-fourths of milk gives us M-I. Then we have C-H, then A, E, and L. It seems that Michael has something to do with Jane's disappearance. I'll be showing you combinations of emojis, and your task is to guess what fruit or vegetable they stand for. Here's the first, very simple one. What do you think it is? So there's an egg and a plant. So, of course, it's an eggplant. The next one. This time, it's not so obvious. Do you have any ideas? It's a ladyfinger. Good job. Off to the next one. I wonder if you can get this one right. A car and a rat. A carrot, of course. Now let's add some letters to help you. What about this one? What's your bet? O and a leaf. That's an olive, of course. Okay, here's the next one, and I know you'll get it right. Some sugar, or rather something sweet, and a potato. Of course, it's a sweet potato. Okay, now it's getting a bit more complicated. What's your call? There are two types of people who love it and those who can't stand it. It's cauliflower. Okay, and here's the last one for you. Q, a comb, and a bear. Cucumber. Great job with these ones. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She was wandering around until she found the road leading to the house of a witch, her old friend. Esme approached the house, but the witch wasn't there. Instead, there were four open portals. On the table, Esme found the witch's to-do list. Can you figure out which portal the witch entered?
The first two tasks on the witch's to-do list are completed, so she's most likely left to catch some frogs. The number in brackets must mean the number of sides each portal has. 10 is a star, 3 is a triangle, 4 is a square, and a 0 is a circle. To catch some frogs, she must have used the portal that looks like a square. Cindy was a kind and beautiful girl in her junior year. Two best friends, Dylan and Kobe, wanted to ask her out to prom. So the guys decided to ask Cindy's best friend which of them likes Cindy more. The girl didn't want to share her best friend's secrets, but she gave them a hint. Cindy loves pizza, but she can't stand burgers. She likes to go to the pool, but never goes to the gym. Her favorite animal is the llama, but she's afraid of zebras. Which of the boys does Cindy like? Cindy's friend wanted to give the guy a clue, so we have to look for some pattern. All the things Cindy likes have double letters in them. Dylan has the double L in his name, so he must be the one Cindy likes more. Kate woke up in a dungeon and couldn't remember what had happened to her. The place didn't look safe, so she decided to get out. The door was open and she left the room, walking down the hallway. Several minutes later, Kate stopped in front of two elevators and one door with an exit sign on it. Is it the way out? In any case, the door was locked and required a password. Can you guess what the password is? Pay attention to the numbers on the elevators. They say 13 and 11, so the password must be 1311. In a small quiet town, young men started to go missing. The police had been looking for them for many months and couldn't find any traces. But one day, they discovered an abandoned basement in an old swimming pool. Inside, there were three young men who claimed they had been held there for three months. One of them was the kidnapper. But who? Look. One guy doesn't have facial hair whatsoever, and another man has grown a beard since he hasn't shaved in three months. But this guy is freshly shaved, so he must be the kidnapper. Oliver is terrible at packing. Whenever he goes somewhere, he always takes stuff he'll never need, so he needs your help with some packing. Today, he's packing to go camping in the forest. Take a look at his bag and decide what he won't need on the trip. Look, there's an electric hairdryer. There's no electricity in the forest, so he can definitely leave it at home. Now look at what Oliver has packed for his vacation in Egypt, where he'll be staying in an all-inclusive hotel. Is there anything he won't need? Is that laundry detergent? Yeah, you don't wash your clothes yourself in an all-inclusive hotel. Now he's off to his girlfriend's place to spend the weekend with her. What does he have in his bag that he really won't need there? Is it a roll of toilet paper? I think it's very likely that his girlfriend has that. Oliver is going to visit his grandparents and stay with them for a week. They live on a farm where there are cows and horses. Oliver is going to chill and do some gardening. Now check his suitcase. What's there that he won't need? I don't think he'll need his tuxedo. He'll most likely be wearing some casual clothes all the time. Yasmin is wandering through a forest and sees a spooky house. As soon as she steps inside, the door behind her back slams shut. It's the house of an old magician who doesn't like visitors. But there's a chance for strangers to escape. There are three drinks. The red one will turn Yasmin into a mouse for an hour. The green one will allow her to fly for an hour. The blue one will make her breathe fire for an hour. Which drink should Yasmin choose if she wants to get out?
Yasmin should drink the red liquid. She'll turn into a mouse and will be able to escape through this little hole in the front door. Sheila participates in a beauty pageant. The next catwalk will take place in 30 minutes. Sheila leaves her stuff in the dressing room and goes outside to talk on the phone. After that, she returns oh, no. and sees that someone has torn her costume. Sheila gets furious and questions her rivals. Millie says, I was getting my makeup done, so I sat in my chair motionless and I couldn't look around. Chelsea says, I was in a toilet. I think I ate something wrong for lunch. And Isabella says, I was outside the dressing room filming stories for my subscribers. Who is lying? Millie. She said she got her makeup done, but why did she ruin it by putting on a face mask? Sheila goes to the storage room to find a new dress. Suddenly, the door slams shut behind her. Oh, no. She needs to enter an eight-letter password to open the door. Sheila needs to be on the stage in five minutes. Can you help her crack the code? This picture on the wall is a hint. Sheila needs to enter paradise. Sheila opens the door and meets face to face with creepy rats. She runs away and gets lost in the basement. Sheila finds these three doors leading to the stage, but each door is hiding some danger. There are broken wires and a puddle of water on the floor behind the first door. There's a scorpion behind the second door waiting to bite Sheila. And there's a magical portal leading to the top of a mountain behind the third door. Can you help Sheila make the right choice? She should choose the first door. There's enough space. Sheila can crawl underneath the wires. Sheila enters the stage and spots three uh -oh. weird details in the auditorium. Can you see them too? Take a closer look at this lady. She's holding a book upside down. This musician is playing the violin without any strings. Also, there's a panda among the viewers. Sheila becomes a beauty queen. She gets a diamond tiara and a paycheck. She goes backstage, but suddenly all lights in the building go out for a few seconds. When the lights turn on again, oh, no. Sheila sees that someone has stolen her tiara. She questions three rivals. Zoe says, I don't want your cheap tiara. My dad is a billionaire. Jasmine says, Someone pushed me in the dark and scratched my dress. Rachel says, You must have dropped it on the floor. Look better. Who stole the tiara? Zoe, it's hidden under her diamond necklace. The next day, Sheila wakes up in a creepy castle. A wicked witch turned her into a monkey. To break the black magic, Sheila needs to use a spell. But the spell book is locked in a box. The lock requires a six-digit code. Can you help her open the box? There are exactly six candles on the shelf above the box. It's a hint. Each candle has a particular number of dots. So the code is 243621. There are four big houses in Sheila's neighborhood. All four are standing in one row and they have different colors. Red, green, white, and blue. Mrs. Jones's house is somewhere to the left of the green house. The third house in the row is white. Mrs. Snake owns a red house. And Mrs. Crystal doesn't live at either end of the row. But she lives somewhere to the right of the blue house. Meanwhile, Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. And the first house isn't red. Can you decide who lives where and what the color of each person's house is?
from the clues, we know that the first and the third houses can't be read. Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. Therefore, Mrs. Snake, who owns the red house, can only live in the second. Since Mrs. Crystal doesn't live at either end, she must live in the third house, which is white. Mrs. Jones's house is somewhere to the left of the greenhouse, which means that Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. As for Mrs. Jones, she lives in the first house, and it's blue. Can you spot a fake teacher? The guy on the left isn't a real teacher, he's an actor. Take a closer look. There's a rec camera icon at the top of the screen. Two friends want to cross a river. The only way to get to the other side is by boat. But this boat can only take one person at a time. The boat cannot return on its own, and there are no ropes or any other similar tricks. Yet both guys manage to cross the river using the boat. How is that possible? The guy started on the opposite banks of the river. Josh and Bob are twins. Josh lives with his wife, and Bob lives alone. Can you guess which one is Josh? It's the first guy. He has a pair of toothbrushes in his bathroom, while Bob only has one. A time traveler is attending this party. Can you spot this person? This lady's shoes look too old-fashioned. Chuck enters a spooky building where he's supposed to have a job interview. Suddenly, someone locks the door, and now Chuck is trapped. He wanders around for a while and sees these four doors. He also finds a note. Only door three is leading to the job interview. The remaining doors will take you to the black hole. Good luck. Can you help Chuck choose the right door? No need for luck, Chuck. The symbols on the door are actually numbers. So, Chuck should enter this door. I talk to you, you talk to me. Every day, you hold me. Yet, I can't smell you. What am I? I'm your mobile phone. A gentleman and a lady are talking. The person with black hair says, I'm a gentleman. The person with blonde hair says, I'm a lady. At least one of them lied. Can you guess the hair color of each person? If only one of them lied, they would both be gentlemen or both be ladies. Therefore, they both lie. It means that the lady has black hair and the gentleman is blonde. Can you spot what's wrong in this picture? There's no milk in the jug. Can you see anything odd in this picture? The image in the mirror is not reflected. Can you spot a vampire? This guy over here. Fiona is a young witch. She finds these four portals in a haunted castle. Fiona chooses one of the portals and enters. You can hear city noises from the first portal. You can hear sea waves from the second portal. You can hear leaves rustling from the third portal. And bells are ringing from the fourth. Which portal did Fiona enter? Fiona's dirty footprints on the floor are leading to the third portal. 
Don't mind the different sounds, this could just be a magic trick. Billy finds himself on the roof of a skyscraper that is about to crumble. The only way out uh -oh. is to use one of these four elevators. There's a werewolf hiding behind the first elevator. If Billy chooses the second elevator, he'll fall hundreds of feet. Super venomous snakes are crawling all over the third elevator. And mutated scorpions are waiting for Billy inside the fourth elevator. Just one bite will make him fall uh -oh. asleep forever. Which way should Billy choose? The first one. Take a look at the sky. The moon is not full. So the werewolf is harmless. Rachel meets three of her former school friends in the parking lot. All three want to impress Rachel. So they begin to discuss their new cars. Melanie says, I wanted my car to be one of a kind, so I bought this one. Peter says, Since I'm a beginner, I purchased the cheapest used car. And finally, Samantha says, I bought a large car because I have a big family. Rachel spots a liar right away. What about you? It's Samantha. Her car key doesn't match the logo on the car. Jenny and Ben were about to get married. They wanted to book a hotel for their wedding ceremony in the party. So they went to a wedding planner to look at some options. She told them only three hotels were available for the day they wanted and showed them the pictures. Which one should they choose? Take a closer look at the third floor windows of the first hotel. In the last window on the right, there's a creepy shadow of a monster that appears and disappears. Five stars or not, no one would like to get married in a haunted place unless they're an Adams family member. In the third hotel, only has two stars. It probably doesn't have the facilities to host a wedding, so the best choice is the second hotel. Great choice, the wedding planner said, and you're in luck because they actually have a great discount offer. If you can answer this riddle correctly, you won't have to pay for the ballroom rental. Here it is. Those who have it, do not say it. Those who take it, do not know it. Those who know it, do not want it. What is it? Do you know the answer? It's fake money. The next day, Ben and Jenny went to the hotel to pick the best ballroom for their party. The hotel manager took them to three different rooms where they could host everything, from the ceremony itself to the dinner and after party. Which one should they pick? Do you see a little mouse hole in the corner of the first ballroom? The couple wouldn't want such uninvited guests at their party. As for the second ballroom, the chandelier looks like it might fall down any minute. Not the safest option, so they should pick the third ballroom. It was time for Ben and Jenny to pick the wedding menu. Since they were not paying for the venue, they wanted to spare no expense in serving food that the guests would never forget. That's why they called three different Michelin star chefs. Each of them prepared a different dish and presented them for a tasting. Which chef, and therefore, which dish should they go for? Even though the dish the second chef made looks perfectly fine, do you see a rat's tail hanging from his chef's hat? There must be some ratatouille situation going on there. So that's a pass. The third dish looks like spaghetti, right? Well, look again. Those are actually very thin snakes. Exotic flavors might not be the best option, so they better go with the classical burger that the first chef made. Before they made their wedding vows, Jenny had to say yes to a dress. So, she went to a couture store to check their wedding gown collection. She explained to the designer the style of the dress she wanted for her ceremony. 
The designer said he had just the perfect gown for her and would bring it to her if she answered his riddle correctly. He asked, if a gown takes an hour to dry, how many hours will it take six dresses to dry? It'll still take one hour because they'll all dry at the same time. Ben had one last item to buy on his wedding shopping list, and it was what fastens two people yet touches only one. Can you figure out what it is? It's a wedding ring, of course. Ben headed to a jewelry store to get something blue for his bride. The store owner showed him three different wedding rings with blue gemstones. Which one should he buy? The second ring has an engraving inside, so it must have belonged to someone else before. The gemstone on the third ring has a tiny crack in it. That can only mean it's made of glass or even plastic. So, Ben should buy the first ring with a sapphire. Next, Ben and Jenny were going to send out invitations. One print shop offered them three different versions of invitations. Which one should they choose? Do you remember the name of the hotel they booked? It was Sunrise Lodge. But the first invitation says Sunset Lodge, so this one won't do. And on the third invitation, their names are printed as Benny and Jen. That's not our couple, so they should choose the second invitation. Before the wedding, three of their friends paid them a visit. One of them brought a painting as a wedding gift, but all three claimed that they were the artist who had created it. Two of them must be lying. Can you figure out who the actual artist is? Take a look at the signature on the painting. It says, Denise. Now look at the third friend's necklace. It has the letter D. So she must be Denise, the artist who painted the painting. It was finally the day of the wedding, and Ben and Jenny's guests started to arrive. However, the hotel security spotted three suspicious-looking people who could be uninvited. Take a look at these three guys. Can you tell which one is not supposed to be at the wedding? Do you see the hotel wristbands that say Ben and Jenny that the second and the third guys are wearing? That can only mean they are actually invited. So it's the first guy who's crushing the wedding. Sorry dude, no free drinks for you. After the vows were exchanged, it was time to party. As Ben and Jenny were dancing, someone spilled their drink on Jenny's dress, but no one saw who it was. Jenny spotted three people who could have done it. Take a look at them. Can you tell who ruined her dress? The first guy has spots on his shirt that resemble stains from the spilled drink, but they are actually part of the pattern, so it can't be him. The third lady looks clean, but the hem of the second lady's skirt looks dirty, so it must be her who did it. After the ceremony ended, Ben and Jenny wanted to take a photo to capture the moment forever. But take a look at it, there's something strange about it. Can you spot what it is? Can you see a woman hiding behind the trees, watching them? She is wearing a witch hat, but it's a wedding ceremony and not a costume party. Creepy. Right before leaving, Jenny suddenly vanished. Then the witch suddenly appeared in front of Ben and said, You may only kiss the bride if you figure out with whom you really tied the knot. Ha <laughs> ha! Then two Jennies appeared in front of Ben. Can you tell which one is his real wife? Remember the wedding photo? 
The Jenny on the left is the real one because her tattoo is on the same side as in the photo. Now that Ben and Jenny's wedding was over, phew, it was time for them to pick a honeymoon destination. They went to a travel agency to book a tour. The travel agent offered them three different holiday destinations, Ibiza, Cannes, and the Caribbeans. Which one should they go to? Have you noticed the weather forecast on TV in the office? It states that the weather in Ibiza is going to be windy in the upcoming days, and in Cannes, it's going to be rainy, so they should pick the Caribbeans and enjoy the sun. The travel agent said she could upgrade their plane tickets to business class for free. It would be her wedding gift to them. But they had to crack this riddle. What can travel around the world while staying in a corner? It's a stamp. Jim goes hiking and gets lost in the woods. After a while, he gets really hungry. Jim wanders around and finds these three options, but only one of them is safe. Can you help Jim make the right choice? All the footsteps are leading to this berry bush, but not a single animal walked away from it. So the berries are probably poisonous. There's a scorpion creeping around these delicious bananas, so Jim should choose the apple tree. Timmy is packing bags for a hike in the mountains. Can you sort out extra items? It's unlikely he's going to need a hair dryer. Timmy's already taking a flashlight, and he probably won't have access to electricity. Therefore, he doesn't need this table lamp. And finally, he shouldn't take this heavy silver cutlery. A frog is at the bottom of a well. The well is 30 feet deep. The frog climbs up 5 feet every day, but it slips back 4 feet every night. After how many days will the frog be free? Twenty-six days. Wow! The frog climbs up by just one foot per 24 hours. So in 25 days, it will be at the level of 25 feet. And on the 26th day, it will make the final 5 feet jump and get out of the well. Billy here wakes up in a creepy cave and finds four tunnels leading outside. He only has one chance to escape. There's a hungry tiger inside the first tunnel. The second tunnel is filled with dust and spider webs. Yuck! There's a water-filled tank with sharks inside the third tunnel. And the fourth tunnel is full of venomous snakes. Uh -oh. Which tunnel is more or less safe to enter? Billy should choose the second tunnel. There are no spiders in this picture, only the webs. Crawling through them might be unpleasant, but at least he'll stay safe. Three tourists go hiking and get into trouble. Surprise, surprise! Can you guess who has more chances to survive? The third person. Although rats are gross, they're not fatal. Diana's boat was wrecked, and she ended up on a tropical island. The locals speak an unknown language, so Diana can't understand them. But still, she managed to spot this guy's wife right away. Can you see her too? It's the third lady. They have similar tattoos. Wendy is walking in the woods and falls into the trap of evil elves. She offers their king a deal. If I write your exact age on a piece of paper, you'll let me go. The king agrees and gives Wendy a piece of paper and a pen. In a minute, he lets her go. How did she do it? Wendy literally did what she said. 
She wrote your exact age on the paper. Ah, clever girl. Stan is walking home in a haunted city. He finds a nice spot to shoot a TikTok. But unfortunately, he falls into a basement. Stan looks around and finds four doors out. There's a hungry dragon behind the first door. The second way is filled with intense fire. There's a desert filled with hungry piranhas behind the third door. And venomous snakes are waiting behind the fourth door. Which way is the Uh safest? The third one. Piranhas live in water, so they wouldn't manage to survive in the desert. Therefore, they're not dangerous for Stan. Jessica gets lost in the desert with just one small bottle of water. She has no clue where the nearest water source is. What would you suggest? Run as quickly as possible to find more water? Pour all water on her head to avoid sunstroke? Find a shady place and rest? Stay where she is and shout for help as loud as possible. The third option is the best. When it gets darker and cooler, she can walk further and find help. Tilda is boarding a private jet. The crew greets her, and she spots an imposter among the crew members right away. Can you see this person too? The pilot is wearing a badge with a female face and name on it. Therefore, he had stolen someone else's ID. Tyler wakes up in the morning and finds out that his shadow is gone. Uh He goes to the local witch. She offers to choose from these six options. But only one of these shadows really belongs to Tyler. Can you spot which one? Only the first shadow fits perfectly. Nina and Sarah are both fond of swimming, but one of them is making a big mistake. Can you guess who? Nina. The sign says that the water in this river contains toxic waste. Meanwhile, Sarah can easily surf in large waves. Kyle and Betty go to a remote village to spend a romantic weekend. They see a cute little farm on the way and buy some pomegranates. They go on a picnic and enjoy the fruits. Each of them eats half of the pomegranate. In 10 minutes, Kyle gets very sick. Betty takes him to the hospital. Doctors check everything and come to the conclusion the pomegranate was poisoned. Kyle and Betty ate the same food and drank the same drinks all day. How is it possible that Betty still feels well? The poison was in the white seeds. Kyle ate them whole, while Betty only the red part. Allison is jogging in a park. Suddenly, she comes across an angry brown bear. It's getting closer and closer, but Allison manages to survive. What did she do? Started running as fast as she could? Fell to the ground and pretended to be unconscious? Or stood still and didn't move? What do you say? Usually, brown bears only attack people when they're surprised or feel threatened. Allison fell to the ground, and the bear didn't consider her dangerous. Peter is hiking in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, he sees a mountain tiger in the distance. He's trying not to panic and begins to Uh look for a place to hide. There are three possible options, but only one of them is more or less safe. Can you help him make the right choice? If Peter climbs this tree, the tiger can easily get him there. Tigers actually like to swim. That's why it's not safe for Peter to escape by boat. But if he hides in this cave and blocks the entrance with a stone, he can call rescuers and wait for evacuation. Alice is 45 years older than her son Tom. 
Both of their ages contain prime numbers as the digits. Also, Alice's age is the reverse of Tom's age. Can you figure out their ages? The only single-digit prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, and 7. Here's a list of possible age combinations. 32 and 23, 52 and 25, 73 and 37, 53 and 35, 75 and 57, 72 and 27. But only the last combination meets the first requirement. The age difference should be 45 years. Therefore, Alice is 72 and her son is 27. Polly is an archaeologist. She excavates an ancient city. Suddenly, she finds a beautiful antique vase, or vase if you prefer. But one piece is missing. Polly also finds these ceramic fragments. Can you help her find the missing piece of the vase? The fourth fragment fits perfectly. Dan lands with a parachute in a field in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Been there, done that. He finds the nearest bus station to get back to the city. But only one of these four buses will arrive at the station. Can you guess which one? It's the second bus. You can crack this maze much easier if you start drawing from the final destination. Amy leaves her workplace to go to the bathroom. She returns and finds out that someone had stolen all the cash from her wallet. Amy checks the wallet surface for fingerprints, but she only finds her own. The next day, Amy questions three of her co-workers. Mike says, Sorry, I've been out for lunch when the robbery took place. Oliver says, I've been feeling sick all morning, so I went home early. And Will says, I've been having a conference call with their clients. Can you spot the thief? It's Oliver. Take a look at his trash bin. He used gloves to steal the cash and then left them in the trash. He's the clumsy culprit. <laughs>